on August 9th, 1942, under siege by Germany. The symphony by Dmitry Shostakovich was premiered by a starving orchestra in a frozen city. Loudspeakers midwifed the music throughout the city, whose grounds were so hardened by winter they could not crack open to bury their dead. Frozen bodies literally lay in the streets. But when the music rang, even the German soldiers would press blooded hands to frozen ears, and I imagine what warless life the music carried them to. A life before a demagogue sent them to die in service of an empire. What hand held them like cloth? What bread broke in surrender to their mouths? What music moved them? Much like this music now, reaching for them indiscriminately, knowing little of boundary and battle, music birthed from a people that refused to die. Today in America, any officer at a protest has heard one piece of music above most in 2015. The song cracked through the air, morphed into fuel, burrowed into bones. Any officer could tell you of the electricity filling the crowd, the lighting of a thousand eyes when an officer goes home that night, sinks into bed. How often does his mind replay Kendrick Lamar's all right? A faint strain sneaking upon him just before sleep from car speakers and blaring bass from crowds of chants fists drenched in tear gas and milk, mere moments from sleep. How many times did the lyrics hum from the officer's mouth before he remembered this song was not created for them? It knows its origin, can recall its birth from a people that stay refusing to die. The sweetest inevitability is when history's demons submit to music, when the names of would-be demagogues are buried in the beat, when we stop honoring the bloodied flower of the officer's name. Watch the bloody flower dissolve. Watch the glory of its dissolution in a 400 year time lapse. Watch the petals shrivel and split from the irrelevant officer's name landing weightless into brown hands buried in a continent shaped like a homeland, a home a seething Kendrick renamed Compton. Woo!